let's talk to you guys first and, and see who you are and what you might want to know about. Um, I would uh, like to just do a quick survey. And also, what uh, one thing that you might not have seen, I'm actually a, a professor about web videos. I invented the study of web video at USC in 2004 and have been teaching USC, UCLA, Chapman University, and Emerson College now, as well as for the Writers Guild um, since then. And Freddie W. was in my classes, Five Second Films. A lot of those people have, have come out of some of my classes. In fact, Bernie Sue, who you worked with as well. And so uh, I always start by surveying the audience. So uh, how many of you guys are web series creators? OK, that's pretty much it. <laughs> uh, anything else? Anybody else have any other interests? Here? That I can be in? Can I be in it? Can I, right. <laughs> this is how this is me He's networking. always hustling. Uh, yeah. I love to network. <laughs> What kind? <laughs> what kind of muffins? That's a trick question. No, I'll, I'll do it. I'll eat any, any kind of muffin. Yeah. <laughs> I had them all shook That's up, fine. though. That's good No, he, he, it's not a euphemism. He means the real pastry. Oh, yes. Oh. I will do that. Yeah. Okay. Given that these are web series uh, creators, and you guys are, are buyers, financiers, leveragers, uh, facilitators, producers, actors uh, of, of these web series, um, Let's start with a story. Stories are always fun. So um, who wants to go first with a story of how you created a web series or how you know, you're working on a web series or some you know, interesting little you know, one or two-ish minute story that you think might be of advantage to these people? So let's start with Jenny. Sure. Okay. Um, I can tell a story of how I got into making web series from the beginning. Uh, so they, they agree. It's okay. Yeah, you can go. Cool. Yeah. Let's do it. Thank you. Um, so I was kind of <laughs> playing around with web video back when I was doing <laughs> sketch comedy, and I was actually developing a sketch show called "The History of the World According to YouTube" because I was obsessed with YouTube at the time. Right. And we were taking historical characters and taking viral videos and like mushing them together. And my very first idea was, well, if if Anne Frank had a camera, she'd video blog. So, ah. <laughs> uh, so I took the first episode of Lonely Girl 15, which I was a huge fan of, and I rewrote it in like 1940s speak uh, with Anne Frank as the focal point, and I played Anne Frank, and it was just like a four-minute video that basically ripped off the first episode of Lonely Girl, and I showed it at uh, UCB used to do a thing where you could show stuff and wow. work on sketches and. People were like, that's awesome, put that online. And I was like, yeah, I should put it online, why not? And I did, and I'm actually, because I was part of the Lonely Girl 15 community, the community knew who I was, so it wasn't like I was just like throwing this in their faces. Like, hmm. And they all loved it, and they're like, can you please make some more? I was like, oh, okay, I can make some more, why not? And I ended up doing it for a year, and it got to the point where like, I was like, well, Anne Frank just can't stay in her bedroom the whole time, that's boring. So she <laughs> started to time travel, and... Yeah, it became this whole thing. I brought in like all these other characters, like fans of the show were working on it with me. And then eventually the creators of Lonely Girl 15 went, hey, we really like your show. Do you want to come work for us? Like, why don't oh you come God. help us with the show? That's great. And I was like, great. How much does it pay? <laughs> and they were like, well, we can only hire you as a PA. And I was like, I'll take it. So I literally like quit a job in reality TV where I was at a producer level to start over in web because... Wow. Reality is like killing my soul. And I right. was like, yes. this is not fun. This is not fulfilling. Mm -hmm. My parents thought I was crazy. They're like, what are you doing? You have health benefits. And I was like, no, just wait. So wow. I took a huge leap of faith and just started over again in web video. So, uh, so it's, let's talk a little bit about concepts then, because since these are all web series creators and some of them may have boring, you know, I've created boring web series ideas that I thought, God damn, you know, and put lots of money into it and failed, so uh, we all must have had good and bad. Anybody have any bad web series ideas that just didn't pan out? It shouldn't be only me. Please make it be not only me. I only have success, so I, let, let me yeah. know when we, get, when we get to the success part, the, the, big, the big money success part, I'll chime in. He really is funny. J Jason starred in a web series I did uh, called uh, Mr. Wright, 
with Taryn Southern, yeah, yeah. and uh, Glozell was in it. And Which is like very similar to, I do a lot of awkward dating, relatable stuff, because it's kind of, I just take it from my life, and I think people can relate to that, and it's not super produ too production heavy, and you can swap people out, and have right. uh, different dates or whatever, and um, blogs will pick it up, and I feel like that's very cost, kind of cost effective, and, mm -hmm. and whatever, that, whatever that is. Yeah, dating is cool because it's, you know... Every, you know, I think relationships are something. No one's ever going to, like, I figured out relationships. We can never need to talk about that again. Like, books, <laughs> self-help books, romance <laughs> novels, romantic comedies will always keep coming out. So I'm like, there's, people are always going to be awkward and confused and, you know, and I like to embody that as much as I can. You do. You do a fine job of that, actually. Thank you. <clears throat> so, uh, all right. So let's hear some bad ideas. Let's hear some, like, things that have failed so that these folks here will realize that, you know, we all fail. Some of us more I'll, than others. I'll be very broad about it because I don't want to offend any creators. But I found that the, the worst concepts that we launched uh -huh. were ones where we thought that the concept was so good that we were willing to plunk a bunch of money behind it. And there was no actual selling point to get people to watch it the first time. Because regardless of how good your thing is, if nobody watches it that has the ability to share it and then have it start picking up steam, it's going to die on the vine every single time. So we, we now line up when it's something that's good that's not influencer backed, so it's not going to have a lot of like tweet power as soon as it launches. We really mm -hmm. try to focus in on getting on a platform that's just getting enough endemic traffic that will pick it up that we'll be able to launch. Because, yeah, there was some really bad ones where we put, you know, 20,000, 30,000 an episode behind it. Oof. And, uh, yeah, it launched and nobody watched because nobody knew it existed and nobody ever will. Ever. That's the thing is, yeah. If, yeah, that dark. Really, if nobody knows it exists. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A lesson that I got out of that as well was being underfunded. Because I, I did a web, uh, a web series called The Mo Show, and it was, it was just when... Uh, apps were starting to really peak and you know there's an app for that it was like a popular meme and I had uh, uh, Dana Ward from Clever TV starring in it and we had you know namey people in it and all that sort of thing and uh, because it was being produced by the producers of Judge Judy and shows like that they were used to more of a television format and so they kind of went the expensive route on stuff and the show wound up being underfunded, and so we only had enough in our pockets to fund about three or four episodes, and we all thought, you know, like the advertising dollars would kick in, and actually it was syndicated on TV as well. And we thought it was gonna pick up, but it, you know, we just ran out of money, and it's always twice as expensive as you think it's gonna be. It's always gonna take two or three times as long as you think it's going to, right? And so that's one of the tricks is, you know, to be sure that what you're doing is replicable and that you have the funds and the resources and the time to do it if you're going to launch it. Let's hear some more success stories. Um, I used to say, like, the way to get big on YouTube is start five years ago, but there have <laughs> been a lot of new stars coming up. I think uh, the best one to talk about is probably Bart Baker, who does, like, some of the biggest parodies on YouTube. I'm in that movie, Late in America, with him. Yeah, yeah. We're in a scene together. <laughs> uh, yeah. That and was like, your success story. You're done now, Jason. Okay. That's yeah, it. by association. Yeah. I was no, but Bart's, okay. Bart's also an example right. of like not giving up. Like yeah. he's been around for a long time. Yeah, yeah. He like uh, I've been with him nearly from the beginning when he started with Maker because he started just doing like parodies in his backyard in Chicago, like on green screen, wow. and a few of them. Like one of them went viral, and he decided like after that he like started like coming out like every month to produce things at Maker, and then decided to make actually make the move to to L.A. and I think. Two big things are he's a very hard worker and he's uh, got a funny, weird sense of humor. Huh. But what really switched over, like I think, on his channel is he just stuck with it until he found exactly what worked. He found what worked for him, what worked for the audience. Because early on he had like it was very weird things. He had like old people in the parodies, like very like <laughs> trapped in cages and stuff. Uh, <laughs> there were a lot freakier than they are now. Now he has attractive people who are you other YouTube stars. So like he started And not trapped in cages. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, so the lesson is just still. be attr be attractive. Yeah. Be more or cage free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, cage free. Uh, so it works for eggs. Why not? <laughs> yeah. No, he started appearing in the videos himself, so they had a consistent like personality that was in every one of them. Um, and then he started collaborating a lot, like putting other people in his videos and appearing in their videos. So Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That's really wonderful. <laughs> cool, cool, cool.